Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Book Vibes. My name's Sam, and since it's Saturday, I decided to do a weekend reading vlog. So the two books that I'm going to read is The Last House on the Street by Diane Chamberlain. And this is a historical fiction slash thriller, I believe. So it just came out January 11th, and we follow a dual timeline. So the first person we follow is Ellie, and that takes place in 1965. And then the second timeline is in 2010, and we follow Kayla Carter. So I don't know much about it, but I will keep you updated as I'm reading without giving you any spoilers. And then the next book that I'm going to read is actually an audiobook. It's an ARC copy, and it's called... The Saints of Swallow Hill. It is set to be released on January 25th. So I don't know much about it. All I know is in the description it says it's a mix. It's where the Crawdads Sing meets the Four Winds, which are two of my all-time favorite books. So I'm really excited to see how this one goes. And yeah, so the plan is I'm going to get some reading done or I'm going to be able to at least listen to this audiobook hopefully while I'm cleaning or cooking today. It's the morning so I'm going to jump on the stationary bike and get that out of the way. Then I'm going to cook breakfast and yeah then hopefully I'll be able to start reading one of these and then I'll check back in with you soon. So I'm about 50% done with the audiobook. So I wanted to share an update on that one. So far we're following Ray Lynn and Dell. Their paths cross when they start working at Swallow Hill, which is a turpentine farm. So Ray Lynn, she's a woman, so obviously she can't work there, but she disguises herself as a man because she had to leave her old life behind. I'm not going to say why, because I don't want to give anything away, but she goes to work on this field with the men, and then Dell also leaves a farm that he was working at because the owner was putting him in danger, so he leaves in the middle of the night to go to Swallow Hill. He gets there first, and then their paths cross when Dell it actually becomes her boss. So that's what I've read in that one so far. So far it's really good. It takes place during the Great Depression, so it is sad. It is involving segregation and the way people were treated on the farm, so it is a little hard to read sometimes. But I've read The Four Winds, so I'm used to that. <laughs> that one was really hard to read. But aside from that, I really like the book so far. Then for The Last House on the Street, I'm only like 40 pages in this one. It's a little harder for me to sit down and read on the weekends. So the audiobook, I'm flying through a lot quicker. <laughs> but so far I like this one. So we follow Ellie in 1965. And her dad owns a pharmacy in Round Hill, North Carolina. So she's in school to take over the pharmacy. But then in the summertime, she finds out about this organization that go into the black communities to help them register to vote and to convince them to vote. She really likes this idea because she thinks it should be fair, that voting should be fair. So, but... She's scared about what her parents are going to say. She hasn't told them yet. She told her brother, who is worried for her safety. Then Kayla, in 2010, she, her and her husband are building their dream house 
in a new development. There's no other houses there yet, except for theirs. And it's surrounded by trees. It's very secluded. Well, during the construction, her husband unfortunately slips on some nails or screws and he dies. But because it's their dream house, she really wants to live there. Her, she wants to live there. She can't see anyone else living there. It's their dream house that they built that they've always wanted. And they have a four-year-old daughter. So for now, they're staying at her dad's house because this event happened about four months ago. So it's still pretty fresh. And their house is not quite done yet. So she's at work one day and this, this mysterious old lady with really dark glasses and bright red hair comes in her office and she knows things about Kayla. A lot of things she knows about her husband passing away she knows about how it happened, and she knows about her daughter. And she confesses to her that, she confesses to Kayla that she wants to kill somebody. So Kayla, giving her the benefit of the doubt, is thinking, okay, maybe my receptionist told her all that other information about me. Well, she finds out that her receptionist didn't say anything to her. The lady just knew all this. So then she goes to the police, and the police just say, keep an eye out, make sure you keep an eye on your daughter, make sure she's safe. So she goes about her day and she tells her dad and he thinks that it, it was just some crazy old lady who read about that event in the newspaper. So that's where we're at there. They're about to go to the new house to see how the construction's coming along. Overall, I think both of these so far are really good. Obviously, I'm further into the first one, so um, I like that one more so far. But this one, the one that I read 40 pages in so far, it's not hard to get into. Like, I keep wanting to read. It's just finding the time to sit down and read is a bit hard on the weekends for me. So hopefully I'll have more read today. I'm hoping to at least read 100 pages of it today. We'll see how that goes. But I will update you later and let you know what's going on in the story. Hi guys, welcome back. So it is Sunday night and I figured I'd give you an update. So the audiobook that I was listening to, The Saints of Swallow Hill, I finished it. I loved it so much. So like I said before, we were following two people, Dell and Ray Lynn, and how their paths crossed when they started working at the same camp together. Well, bad things happened there. I'm not going to say what. And they ended up trying to leave the camp in the middle of the night. So that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give away anything about it. But if you like historical fiction and you've read Where the Crawdads Sing or The Four Winds, um, you definitely should pick it up because it's really good. I thought the narration was really good on the audiobook version. The the way that the author talked about the domestic violence that was going on during the book or the violence towards the workers was written really well so it wasn't super hard to read although you got a feel for exactly what was going on so it was well written so that it didn't seem too overbearing to read about like in the four winds I cried so, so much, and I don't really cry with books. Okay, maybe I lied. Maybe with historical fiction I do, but this one, the way it was written, um, it just didn't hit me like that, although I did feel compassion for the events that were going on. So I give that one a 5 out of 5. It was really good. And... Uh, yeah, 
and that one comes out January 25th. So if you like historical fiction, again, like I said, that one's really good. I would recommend that one. If you like historical fiction that is based around the Great Depression in the South, then I definitely would recommend this book to you. Okay, so the next book is The Last House on the Street. I did not read any more of that book. <laughs> I was just so invested in the audiobook, and the audiobook was like, I think, 13 hours. So I had my hands pretty full with that one. Um, I will definitely go back to it, but one of my goals was this month, one of my goals was to listen or read an ARC copy so that I can get a review out before it comes out. So I successfully did that. So I'm happy because that was my first ever ARC copy that I've ever read. And I listened to it and reviewed it already. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I will get to The Last House on the Street, but since I have that copy on hand, I'm not too worried about rushing to it. And so the next ARC copy that I want to get into is Finley Donovan, Knocks Him Dead. I got a proof for that one. On It's an audio book as well, but I had never read the first one. So I got that one last week, I believe. And I also, I read it and also had the audiobook version and I loved it. I thought it was really fun mystery. So yeah, my goals are to get to the second one now before the end, before it comes out, which is February 1st. And if I do, great. I can include it in my January wrap up or I might just make a separate video for that one. We'll see. But that's it. So thank you for coming to my first ever reading blog, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.